The next tab in this dialog box is the control limits tab. This is where you would set the center line, the upper control limit, and the lower control limit. Let's look at the default behavior. If you set nothing, you'll notice that this is these uh, control limits that we see on the chart represented by the three standard deviations. They're just going to change as data comes in. Now if you do have good control limits, if for example you've gone out and looked at uh, a good long set of data from when the process was was well under control and for example if you've uh, if you've used filtering to eliminate all your outliers and you've got a very solid set of control limits you'd like to use you can specify those as constants so for example if I'm going to say let's go with 10.1 and we'll go with 9.9 .9, and we'll go with 10 as a center line then these become my constants and no matter how much I scroll backward and forward uh, those are going to be the constants that we see for the this is the upper control limit and the lower control limit, the 10.1 and 9.9. .9. Now in addition to using the constants here, you can also just simply go out and search for pi tags. You can even make use of ODBC datasets, or in the event that you have module context set up like I have here, you can go out and specify aliases from modules or uh, properties from modules. So those are, th those are some of the options that you have available. You may have noticed that the upper specification limit and the lower specification limit are both dimmed out. That's because they will be dimmed out for any of the control charts that, well, for which they don't make any sense. And the only control chart that supports those is the chart of individuals. You'll notice that the upper and lower specifications are available in the case of the uh, chart of individuals. Also, because the uh, CPK, that uh, capability index calculation, is associated with these specification limits, uh, the CPK is only available for the chart of individuals.